Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Crowd Thoughts. I'm David on my own call. I'm David. Oh, happy Father's Day to all the dads. Um, and uh, to my dad. It's kind of interesting, actually, when uh, I'm always surprised when he asks me to do this, right? I'm like, I didn't do a bad enough job last time, but I'll try again. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see what I can lay down here and then get me out of it. <laughs> Give me the hook. Um, but it's interesting, I didn't realize when we, when we had talked about the dates that it was going to be Father's Day, because I'm that person, right? I don't remember dates and, and stuff like that. Um, so this week, I realized everything that's going on in my life today is, is due to my, my mom and dad, obviously. Um, but uh, if my dad's a huge inspiration to me, and I love you, Dad. Happy Father's Day. Um, but I, it's, it's weird because I was thinking, like, how can I totally go off track and do like a Father's Day thing? And, and then God kept guiding me back to the scripture that I used for, for this. Uh, but I do want to tell you how inspirational it was for me. When I first started doing funerals, I would sit and do it with my dad. Now, obviously, he's an incredible minister. Sorry, I'm talking like you're not here. Um, <laughs> Just pretend you can't hear me. Um, <laughs> but he's an incredible speaker, right? Like an incredible, he's got a gift. There's definitely a gift. And it occurred to me, because someone asked me last week, a friend of mine, does anyone else in your family write or, or paint or anything like that? And I said, well, I said, my dad would be an incredible writer. Um, there's a, that gift of, of putting the words into, into form, right? And it was when I stood, was watching him do a funeral of all things, and I'm sitting there in awe of my dad, right? I'm getting a little misty. Um, but it was incredible to watch how something so sad could be made beautiful. And it was the first time, that, I mean, I've recognized it all along, right? That my dad's got a pretty incredible talent. Um, but it was like the first time it hit my heart of how powerful um, that could be to be able to have a gift to turn something so sad into something so beautiful. And, and then as time goes on, I, all I try to do really when I do funerals or anything else is I try to channel my dad. So you have to know that. I try to channel that ability, and I am terrible at it, right? Like, I, I, feel, I feel like I could never do it that way, because it's just like that, there's that, it's kind of up there, right? And, and when, I, when I think about that funeral where it hit me, and I almost started crying, I, um, usually with funerals, like, it, it's tough, right? But I was almost crying because it was that moment where I realized, that's what I want to do! Right? With, with my life. Thankfully, I'm only 40, so I've got lots of time to figure it out. Um, what I'm going what I'm to be when I grow up. And I thought, uh, I thought, that's incredible. Right? So thank you, God. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, let's talk for a minute. And so having said that, I'll do my best here to give myself a hook, right? Um, I lay it all down. Like, what is step six, right? Step six, we get this list, all these different defects of character, we're looking at these things. And, and for me, like, it's pretty, like, God's timing is pretty interesting. I just did a fifth, my yearly fifth step last week. Um, and thankfully, like, you know, I, did, I was able to do it with someone I really trust, someone I respect a great deal, uh, and he was able to tell me things that I probably didn't really want to hear, uh, even though I knew them. Of course, I know, I know, I know, right? I got it, I got it, I got it. Um, but it's interesting because what do you do with that, right? Like, what is that? There's nothing more leaving me feeling more wounded than when I look at that step six list, right? I'm feeling wounded, I'm feeling, um, 
But instead of feeling wounded, this time what happened was, it started to feel enlightening as opposed to wounded. And so as I was in there with, with Peter, and he, we're, he's, we're talking, I start to feel this, this sensation that it's going to be okay. Because the rest of this process is designed to give it away to God and let God change me where I cannot change myself. As it says in the promises, God will do for me what I cannot do for myself. So of course, when I look at this step six list, and I don't know how long everybody else is, but mine's pretty intensive, right? I have some pretty good defects of character that keep me from wanting to grow. And it sounds absurd. Why would I not want to grow? Right? But it's because my ego wants to keep that safety blanket, as Dad mentioned. Toss the blanket away. I wish it was that simple. Right? For me. Because it's been a few years, by God's grace, that I haven't had to drink or use. And what was blatantly obvious to me last week was that, holy crap, what happened was some of my defects shifted. They shifted into different directions, making me think they didn't exist anymore. Right? And it was, I just got goosebumps. Right? Because that's how powerful my mind is when I think I can do it. And that's what I was thinking. I didn't even realize I was thinking that. That's how crazy it is, right? That's why this is a lifelong journey. There were so many things that like Peter helped me see that were there, because you know, obviously Peter's not psychic, right? Even though he plays one on TV, he is not a psychic, right? They recruited him for the awesome mustache, that's right. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> so I had this defect that was my biggest defect of character. And it had just simply changed like slightly over time. Right? And of course, what happens when I start thinking I don't have? Well, I stop praying about it. Right? I stop thinking about it. And then all of a sudden there's this flurry of activity in the direction of this defect. And I'm like stuck, really. I don't know what's happening. So I use John 5, verses 5 through 18. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity, 30 and 8 years. Almost perfect, 30 and 9 years would have been perfect. You know, I'm going to talk, I'm going to send a memo to the guys who wrote the Bible. Change it to 39. <laughs> And we're going to be like right on. Right? So there's this guy. He's been laying there trying to get in the pool. Right? That's me. I'm the dude, man. Right? I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get healed. I think I'm healed. I think I'm healed. Right? When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. Oh. And who does If anybody knows the defects in me, it's God, right? He saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? I don't like this word, but you don't know whatever. The impotent man answered him. <laughs> okay. Only sometimes. Okay. Sir, I have no I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step is down before me. Jesus <coughs> saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Holy cow! Right? Holy cow! <coughs> this is what I needed. This is step six and seven. Right? Pick up your crap and walk. Right? Don't lay there and wait for me to do it for you. Get up. And I loved it, it was like getting chills again. Sorry if I scared anybody, but I gotta tell you, it's his fault. Because there's like this preacher inside, right? That's kind of like <laughs> trying to get out. Okay? But this, how powerful is that? That the Bible has this laid out, right? Long before the big book, long before the steps. But this is what we're talking about, right? 
When I do, when I listen to a step five, and it's somebody who maybe is new, but relatively new, right? I try to give them step six and seven before they leave. Take this with you, pick up your crap, and walk, right? And the walking is the praying. Give it to God, continuously give it to God. And of course, it's a reminder to myself, right? And immediately, the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. And then it starts getting like crazy because Jesus was a rabbi about right? So obviously he's like, whatever, I'm going to heal people when I want to heal people, right? God doesn't take a break, okay? And so that's what the rest of that says. You can see that I'm getting close around and I have time and I don't want to keep it too long. But I can go on and on. So imagine this, you come into your five, right? You lay out all your crap and your raw, if you've ever done a step five, right? You're raw, you're open, you're kind of like emotionally, spiritually leading, right? Because these are things we've never shared with anyone else. Some of these things are our deepest, darkest secrets. The root of our fear, right? Which at its essence, as time is going on, and maybe there will be differing opinions on it, and that's okay. What I've seen is the root of the defects, the root of my, um, root, the root of the nature of my wrongs is fear. I'm terrified. I'm terrified of losing what little I think I have. And I'm terrified of not getting what I want when I want it. Right? So I start to act out in all kinds of different ways. And this past year, for me, personally, has like exhibited a great deal of fear in my, in my heart. A great deal of fear in my, in my life. When the doctor says you could be paralyzed, <gasps> I, I'm like, oh, I think I just pooped. Right? <laughs> I think I might have. I cleaned up the language one. Right? Because that's terrifying. And then so I do what I'm taught. I pray, I pray, I give it over. Slowly the fear starts to like abate, right? But it's that 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 fear that I can see that starts to dissipate as God takes it, right? And then we try all these different treatments, and the doctor says, You're gonna have to have surgery. Right? And he goes, I gotta warn you, you could die. And I was like, I'm like, oh, and once you've done it again, right? So after using the bathroom and coming back and talking to the surgeon, right? I was praying the whole time. All I have is a solution for it. That's what works, right? That's the footwork that God is asking me to do, right? That's the only way that I can make it. And of course, support of the people that God has placed in our life is essential. If I don't talk to those people, if I don't spend time with those people, I'm going to feel more fear, not less fear. Right? I can lock myself in a cave and try to hide out of them. Right? But as it says here, and I think it's probably practical today, we have to go and get some help. Right? The pool that this talks about, the guy's trying to get in, in my mind, it's getting help. Right? It's praying. It's doing service. You know, the doctor said I should probably stop working. And I said, bah! I said, it's the only thing that gives me any kind of hope, right? Is when I'm sitting down with another alcoholic around. It's the only thing. Well, it's one of them, right? Like obviously spending time with my family and my friends and reading and all that stuff. But I gotta tell you. There is, for an alcoholic like me, service is the thing that li literally keeps me ticking. Because there are times where I'm sitting and I'm thinking, and of course, when I start thinking, problems definitely enter into my life. Right? I don't know if anyone can relate to that. Who, where's Bob? I think Bob said outside the best. How did you say that? What's that? <laughs> what did I say? Oh, something about the rats in my head is psychedelic tripping rats. What's that? Rats on acid. Rats on acid. Right? 
they start freaking out, right? And then someone's looking at me, and I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm freaking out, right? And it starts happening on the inside. And then, of course, what happens, like, anyone that I've ever worked with or talked to, what happens when the rats on acid get going, and I don't pray, and I don't go to meetings, and I don't do service work? Well, people look at me, and I'm like, I'm not even there. All I'm thinking about is the negative, right? And it's been quite a trick. I'm not going to try to lie to you and tell you it's been perfect, because I've made some serious, like, well, serious today is much different than before, right? So when I say I make a serious mistake, it's not as though I ran anybody over in my car, or parked my car and lawn somewhere, or did stuff like that, right? But some of the mistakes that come out of my fear, and my, and my well, my human lack of, of faith and trust, right? There's a deep sea to go from working this program, and I'll try to leave you guys with this, because in my mind, it's very hopeful, right? This program works. As the person reading this promise has mentioned, Sue, this program works, right? Because in the other moments, the 98% of the time, when I work this program, what I feel is, okay. The other day when the nurse asked me on the phone, she said, oh, by the way, have you made out a will? <laughs> I know, right? I know. I was so glad I was at home, and nobody could see me, but literally this time, what had happened was I, said, I started laughing, and I said, no, should I? And she's like, you might want to, right? And I could kind of see her face, because she's a nurse, right? She, was, she has to do this all the time. It's not new to her. To me, it's brand new, right? And she, I could almost see her face go, meh, you might want to. Right there, you know. So, but it was it was okay, right? The process of continuing to hammer this away, and thank God, Dean, thank you so much again. I can't thank you enough because no matter how much time goes by, this stuff is slippery, right? And I want to make sure that no matter what happens, I know it's going to be okay because I'm doing the things I need to do. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to use. I'm going to see my mom and dad. I'm going to tell my brothers I love them. I'm going to tell my friends I love them. And, and I have been ad nauseum, right? Because it's like all of a sudden there's this realization that, oh, it could happen. It's, probably, it's not going to. I feel like it's not going to happen, right? But all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm just going to tell people I care about them, right? I'm going to say it instead of thinking and assume they know it. Right? I'm gonna do it. And so of course a couple of my, my friends in the program were like, dude, stop! <laughs> right? Stop, it's weird. I love you too, man. Go home. <laughs> right? Because we'll be in a meeting and I'll be like, man, and I love him. I love him. Right? And of course people are like, dude, what happened to Dave? <laughs> you know? What's happening to him? I'm so grateful though, because we everyone. And I'll tell all of you as well, thank you, right? And I care about you. Might even borderline on love, right? <laughs> that weird kind of love where I'm just grateful you're here, right? And I'm grateful for one more day, as I know most of you, most of you if not all of you are, right? So just for today, let's all stay clean and sober, right? Just for today, I'm going to show as many people as I can love. Instead of the opposite, which I'm used to. I love you too, man. Thanks, man. Thank you. Word. Word. I appreciate that. And so I'm going to close with this scripture because it was kind of like tied into it a little, a little bit loosely, right? Deuteronomy 31 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God. He it is that, that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Trust God, clean house, serve others. Thank you. Alright, you're, you're not done with me yet. <laughs> you care to join me in the step seven prayer? I think that's what we're doing.
My Creator, I am now willing to do to you all the good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I flow from here to do your name. Amen. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Bless you guys.